Hello everybody, Steve Griffiths here, developer of the MT Predictor software program. In today's MT Predictor video, I'd like to take a look at our W3 or Wave 3 trade setup that we have in our MT Predictor 8 standalone version and in our NinjaTrader 8 and NinjaTrader 7 add-ons. But before we start to look at that, we have to look at our risk disclaimer. And I just want to remind you that all examples in these videos should be considered as hypothetical. No trades are actually taken, they're just shown for illustration and training purposes only. Remind you there's a risk of loss in trading and investing. Put another way, all professional traders know and understand, but more importantly accept that losses can and do unfold, no matter what approach you do to the markets. Right, this is actually our add-ons into NinjaTrader 7, but we have the same tools in our add-ons for NinjaTrader 8, as well as our MT Predictor 8 standalone version. <clears throat> so what is our W3 or Way3 trade setup? You can see a good example unfolded here, early today on a three minute chart of the mini DAX, but it uh, unfolds on all different markets and different time frames. For those of you who are no, new to MT Predictor, you'll know that from other videos that we teach that the markets are basically random about 50% of the time. So what we're looking to do is we're looking to only trade setups or look to analyze the markets when the pattern's clear. In other words, within the clear 50% of the time. So of course I can hear you ask, how do we know whether the markets are in a clear pattern? And for that we go to a higher time frame chart. The higher time frame chart is normally a chart between three and five time frames higher. So if you're trading, say, daily stocks, it would be the weekly. If you're, say, trading 15 minute Forex, it would be the hourly. Or in this case, because we're trading the three minute chart, you'd go out to the 15 minute. And for this, you then look for prior swing highs and lows to place your DP support and resistance lines on. So I'm just going to go back a bit. And can you see how here the market came down into a low here? There's a low. That's the last swing into the low. So you'd go back to this last pivot high here. You'd right mouse click, do decision point. That would have given you an area of potential resistance as it's above the market. But can you see how it would be on the chart in advance? So let's see what the DAX did. Well, the DAX rallied up and it made a high, uh, the high of the day so far, <clears throat> basically up at this resistance level. So let's now look at uh, what this looks like on a three minute chart. So you can see here, is the market basically going up and making a meaningful reversal at that 15 minute high. Uh, if you want a bit more detail, if I do Elliott Wave Intermediate, it was actually a one, two, three, four, five, it's the end of a five wave sequence up into that high as well. But that's just a bit of additional information as well to give you added confirmation. But for our W3 trade setup, we're not looking for that. In, uh, as such, we're just basically looking for the market to make a meaningful reversal at a higher time frame support and resistance. So this is where we start our Elliott Wave sequence. This is why I developed my unique isolation approach to Elliott Wave. In other words, because the markets are random half the time, we're not looking to place an Elliott Wave count on the market all the time. We're only looking to do it in the time when the picture is clear. And this is how we define when the picture is clear when it's making a meaningful reversal of a higher time frame support and resistance. So this is where our Elliott wave counter would effectively start. So the initial move down into here would be considered a wave one. The initial correction after the initial move would be a wave two. And therefore we're looking to trade a wave three swing. So if I right mouse click down here, do Elliott wave major, you can see this is basically what we're looking to do. We're looking for a wave one. We're then looking to find the end of a wave two to then trade the wave three. For you guys who are a bit more experienced with Elliott Wave will know that the most common pattern in a Wave 2 correction is an ABC correction. So if I right mouse click here, do Elliott Wave Intermediate, you can see this is what this did here. It did ABC into the Wave 2 before we had the Wave 3 swing. So this is what our, if I just clear everything off here, this is what our trade setup is designed to find. As you can see here, the market printed our TS3, W3 trade setup on the very bar the wave two ended. Our MTP trend was also helping you confirm this by being black as the market was in the process of making reversal, then turned red to help confirm that the larger trend was down. So if we right mouse click on this <clears throat> and do um, analyze to analyze the trade setup, this is what the trade would have uh, looked like. 
Remember we use correct position sizing to vary the number of lots, contracts or shares. In this case to keep the account less than 2% uh, risk on a sample $20,000 account. So for the mini DAX that would mean shorting 7 contracts for this trade entry and this particular stop. And can you see here this would have been our profit target. This is why we like these trade setups. Because the profit targets are normally large but not just large in dollars in this case or uh, euros if you're trading in Europe. Our position sizing you can actually change uh, the account up here. You can set up different accounts and have an account in euros as well if you wish. I haven't set that here, up here at the moment. But can you see how this profit would have been not just large in dollars but large in relation to the initial risk. Here the potential profit as the market reached the typical wave 3 WPT would have been approximately five and a half times R or five and a half times the initial risk required to take the trade. Why do we use the typical wave 3 WPT? Well because we're looking for this to be a wave 2. So remember we start the sequence, the initial move is wave 1, we then do an ABC correction into what was a wave 2, we're then anticipating or projecting that a wave 3 will follow. And a Again, the reason we like this is because a wave 3 is normally the strongest and longest in a completed 5 wave sequence, therefore represents the largest potential move in a completed 5 wave sequence or the largest profit in relation to the smallest initial risk. If I also go back to the higher time frame chart, because I can hear you all saying, well what about the higher time frame chart? Well if I go back, here would have been the, um, the recent low. I'll just scroll off a bit so you can see what that would have been in advance. Remember these DPs are on the chart in advance. So again this would have been the last swing <clears throat> to this high. Down here I right mouse click, do DP and that would have given you a potential support zone on the chart in advance. If I now come down to the three minute chart, which is the one you're looking to trade off, can you see how this 15 minute support zone was also in the same area as your typical way 3 WPT support zone and therefore was giving you extra confidence that <clears throat> this would be a good area where the market might well finish its decline. And as you can see this is where the market is at the moment and um, at this area here a potential 5.5 hour profit or just over that 5.6 hour profit would be available. But this is the basic idea for our W3 or Way3 trade setup. It's looking to catch the ABC correction into the end of a Wave 2 to then trade the Wave 3. We like this because a wave 3 is typically the strongest and longest in a completed 5 wave sequence, therefore has the potential to have the largest profit in relation to the smallest initial risk. Remember we're not looking at profits in just whatever currency you're trading, we're looking at profit in risk units, i.e. in relation to the losses that will unfold when you're trading as well. So if this trade setup goes wrong, the loss would be a 1R or 1 risk unit loss. If it goes right, Hopefully the profit's large, but large in relation to these initial risks. And as you can see, we start our Elliott Wave sequence when we get a meaningful reversal at a higher time frame support and resistance. In other words, that's when we're looking to assume that the market is getting into a clearer pattern and we can then start to do our Elliott Wave analysis. So this is where MT Predict is unique in that we don't try and do Elliott Wave patterns all the time because we know half the time the markets are random and basically the Elliott Wave patterns will just fail and just not do as anticipated and just end up in confusion. But what we do at MT Predictor and have been doing for a, a very long time now is only doing this when we deem the market picture is clear and that is when we make a meaningful reversal of a higher time frame for support or resistance in this case. So there's a good example of our W3 or Wave 3 trade setup that's uh, just unfolded on a 3 minute chart of the DAX using the 15 minute uh, for the higher time frame resistance or I should say the, the mini DAX where into this level here there was a profit of approximately 5.5 R available.